good afternoon on this Sunday morning and welcome to episode 15 of Funny Like a Clown podcast. I'm your host Dennis Worth. It is March 10th, 2019 and uh, today we're going to be discussing a controversial comic to say the least but uh, one everybody knows I'm sure, Bill Cosby. So uh, we'll see where we're going to do that and as always Funny Like a Clown podcast is brought to you by G Vegas Buffalo Sauce. For the spicy, sweet, savory taste of game time, there is only one G Vegas. Available at gvegas.webs.com. And to uh, discuss uh, Bill Cosby and everything in between, I have on the phone comedy friend Bruce Chester. Bruce, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dennis. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Uh, I appreciate you being on. And uh, Bill Cosby, uh, from, from legend to uh, convict, uh, what made you choose him as your comic you wanted to discuss? Well, you know, uh, Cosby's been uh, uh, an influence. You know, in the in the early days, he was really a trailblazer for uh, black entertainers. Really, he was the first uh, sure. black uh, lead in a TV show back in the '60s with I Spy, and uh, from there, he he really uh, kept that influence um, going. Not only just for black uh, comics, but also for uh, education. He really got into um, education what some people may not realize is that Cosby actually had a doctorate in education that he actually got from UMass Amherst here right here in right. Albany, Massachusetts so um, that's kind of where it started you know? so I mean he's um, kind of like of our generation he's the Martin Luther King of our time I mean for, yeah, for as far uh, as he, black he you know definitely the trailblazer, yeah. yeah I mean I mean after Martin Luther King, he kind of blazed the trail after him for, for paving the way for black rights in this country or everywhere. Yeah, Cosby was very, but Cosby's approach was very, very subdued. I mean, he, he was very, you know, very much, um, but he, he was careful not to be too controversial at the time because uh, that w would have kind of ruined his momentum, I, I believe. Um, he, he kind of stayed the course for a long time in the entertainment industry sort of you know and then rather than branching out politically he, he leaned he leaned over towards the um, education aspect of it uh, which made a lot of sense um, because it kept him in the public eye kept him relevant but at the same time it you know it uh, you know it for, for most of his career kept him uh, uh, popular. I mean, like anybody else, he had his ups and downs, you know. He, uh, uh, he kept the, it clean, for sure. And both you and I are comics out of Boston, and you know you work a whole lot more if you can work clean, that's for sure. That's very sure. That's very sure. I actually uh, was confirmed with that by two nationally known comics. I think I've told you that story. Uh, I had the opportunity to, long story, very, very short, um, I had the opportunity to meet Alan Cleghorn uh, from Saturday Night Live in Roseanne. Uh, in Florida, uh, and then uh, a number of years after that, I met uh, Louie Anderson. Actually, I met Louie Anderson from Logan down to the Cape, and we talked comedy, and uh, that was his kind of his model. If you you know you work clean, you always work, you know. That sure, there's much more yeah. opportunity, but uh, it's not what a lot of comics want to do. But even corporate events, yeah. you do corporate events, that's where the money is. But you got to be crystal clean. So you want to go for yeah, the money yeah, or what you love no, to do? I mean, so yeah, what's yeah. uh? So anyway, so we'll, well, if you separate the comedy from his allegations, which we'll get to later, what what was your favorite memory of his comedy career? Oh gosh, uh, where do I start? Um, well, it, it started off as a kid with um, with uh, uh, Fat Albert, you know, um, Saturday mornings watching Fat Albert and enjoying the comedy and kind of getting that um, you know that sort of that mor uh, the moral of the story. And, you know, learning how to treat people, and, uh, and then the nice thing about Fat Albert is that Fat Albert was a smart, even though he was, you know, large, he was a, he was a smart, caring person. And I think that was something that was not really uh, brought up. I mean, it, it, everybody kind of knew that, but nobody really talked about the demeanor of, of Fat Albert, which I think was what Cosby was trying to. Uh, and he was a real person, Fat Albert. That was actually one of Bill's friends as a kid. Yeah, yeah. All those, all the, uh, all the Cosby kids uh, were based on um, people he knew from his childhood. He grew up in, a, he grew up in the neighborhood, right? All yeah, right. So yeah, let's bring yeah. it through. Uh, he started out in the 1960s in San Francisco doing stand-up comedy, mm -hmm. which uh, San yep. Francisco still to this day it's a mecca for stand-up comics. Uh, yep. From there he landed a starring role on I Spy. Now, what do you remember about I Spy? 
Well, uh, believe it or not, it was on before I was born, but I did. I actually uh, had the opportunity to see it. It was an interesting take. Now that was um, with Jimmy Walker, wasn't it? What's that? Wasn't Jimmy Walker in that also? No, no, no. It wasn't in that. Uh, okay. it was, that was long before Jimmy Walker was uh, was uh, famous. Okay. Um, if he was on there, he, it might have been as an extra or something. Right, right, right. But um, uh, no, it was it was uh, Bill Cosby, Robert Culp. Um, and they actually remained friends for many, many years after that. Actually, up until uh, Bob Culp died, he, uh, he and Cosby were good friends. Um, and I think because it was that that chemistry between Culp and Cosby that made made the show so popular. It was slick. It was glib. It was fun, you know. Um, and it was along the, the popular spy genre that had come come around in the '60s. So it was a great um, it was a great venue to launch Cosby into the public eye um, mm-hmm. to be able to, uh, to to get his career really on and solidified. I believe he was actually the first um, one of the, the first blacks to win an Emmy for a, for a leading um, for a leading role. Yeah, you don't you don't just walk into a leading role. Usually, you got to do supporting roles, and I mean, he just walked into a leading role, which means his comedy must yeah. have been really you know really big at the time for him to do that for him. Yeah, yeah, and you also remember that through the, the, the later 60s and in the 70s, he had those his comedy albums were some of the best-selling comedy albums in history. Of all time, yeah. Uh, and, and, yeah, and some of those, uh, you know, some of those albums really um, uh, really influenced the next generation of comics. I know it did for me. I mean, I remember... Oh, well, um, who didn't grow up on those? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, everybody was influenced by it. Yeah. So after I Spy, he went on to do the Bill Cosby show, which lasted two seasons. Then, as we discussed, he used characters from his comedy routine and created Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, which ran until 1985. And I, I think that was more our time where we all watched that as, like, one of our first cartoons, watching cartoons as kids. And who didn't try to imitate his voice? <laughs> it's fat. We all tried to imitate that as a kid, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that, that was really the, the one that launched him into our generation. Like I said, I Spy was before our time, but the Cosby Kids launched him into our generation. And uh, right. I wanted to bring up, uh, as you already mentioned, in the 1960s, he attempted Temple University. He got a bachelor's degree in 1971. 1973, he got a master's degree from UMass Amherst. And then in 1976, he got a doctor of education, also at UMass Amherst. The reason he got that was for using Fat Albert as a teaching tool in elementary schools. So he was a very educated man, aside from comedy, yep. correct? That's correct. Yeah, he was. He, he actually made it a, and it wasn't because he had to. It's because it was a passion of his to to focus on education because he realized that was the way out for a lot of um, poor, especially poor black families. You know, uh, because that's kind of how he got out of there. He he. Uh, um, came from a very poor background, but uh, he actually was in the Navy. I don't know if anybody remembers that, that Cosby actually did some time in the Navy and really? uh, used part of uh, his GI Bill to go to Temple, and that was, um, that was kind of the, the, the upswing, and even in reality, comedy was sort of a second thing. He was a bartender. I think, um, I want to say somewhere, probably out in San Francisco, so I'm, maybe, maybe it was in New York, I don't remember exactly where, but he was a, he was a, he was a bartender, and uh he would always he'd be quipping at the bar and um, to people. Uh, I think it was New York actually. He was, was doing that in New York, and then people encouraged him to start doing comedy, and that's kind of how the ball started. And then he got popular. He did real well. He did the kids did the talk shows. You know, he did Carson. He did oh, know, all the um, late night I, shows, sure. Yeah. And then he ended up, um, you know getting I Spy and the rest, as they say, is history, so it, it was... Um, now, I had heard a story about him, I don't know if it's true or not, but there was two comedy clubs in San Francisco, literally right across the street from each other, and all the main name comics were on one side of the street, and all the young up and comics were on the other side of the street, and they went over there and saw him as a young comic one night, and they booked him across the street where the bigwigs hung out for Friday and Saturday. Well, he went in on Friday, and I guess he tried to fit in and change his act, and he really bombed, and he told the guy, well, I won't come back tomorrow, and the guy's like, no, no, I want you to come back tomorrow, but between now and then, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find the comic that I saw perform across the street and bring him here tomorrow night, not the guy you were tonight, so it's a lesson there. Don't always try to fit in, because I've done that before. I try to clean up my routine for a certain place, and it's taken away from what I do, you know? 
Yeah, you know, that's really the artistry of being a comic. Is, is um, I've got a friend, he's a nationally known comic named Darren Streblo. We actually had the opportunity to meet through a mutual friend uh, when, I, when, I was start, when I first started doing comedy. And um, he's, uh, and he's, he's guaranteed, like me, he's guaranteed clean. He's, he's kind of my inspiration. And he's on YouTube. He's absolutely hysterically fun, goofy looking dude, but just very, very funny. But that's something Darren's, um, Darren espoused to was that uh, his material, he, his, his tagline was um, audi- uh, audience friendly, pastor approved. Because like me, he's, he's a Christian. And, he, and um, his thing was to be able to have material that was good enough to kill in a nightclub on Saturday night, but you could do the exact same routine in church Sunday morning. And that was sort of his standard. Hmm. that he worked towards, so it wasn't just a simple matter of telling clean jokes. There's an area in comedy called Christian good, Comics where they just do Christian comedy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's, there's a big, you know, there's a big mark for it. I call it the religious corporate market. Even Bill Cosby had his routine where he talked to God there, so I mean, he was somewhat oh, yeah. <laughs> into that too, but, uh... Yeah, yeah. So that brings us up to, uh... Brings us up to the 80s, okay, where, uh, the Cosby Show, that's the one where, really, he became America's dad, uh, 1980s, uh, he produced and started it from 1984 to 1992. Uh, it was the number one show in America from 85 to 89. And what are your memories of the Cosby Show? Well, everybody loved the Cosby Show. I mean, it was it was refreshing um, to see an upscale uh, black fa- uh, uh, family. You know, that's not worrying about where the next rent check is coming from. That's not worrying about you know something. Right, not in the ghetto, right? From the house. <laughs> You know, I mean, nothing against good times because there had to be, for blacks in, in television especially, there had to be sort of uh, that upswing. What they can relate road. to, yeah, right. You know, um, you know, you, because in the early 70s he had shows like Sanford and Son and you had, uh, you had good times and you had, and then it kind of changed a little bit when the Jefferson showed up, which was a spinoff of All in the Family. You know, you started to see that move uh, up, you know, for blacks to go from lower no lower income up, uh, to upper income now. Granted, not to brag, but my dad, you know, we grew, I grew up in, in the town of Lunenburg, and it was a predominantly white town, and we didn't have any problems, really. And we were, my, actually, at one point in time, my dad was one of the highest wage earners in town, but he was driving back and forth to Logan Airport, which is an hour drive. So he was willing to, to, to do that for five kids in a nice house. So he broke the and, stereotype where one was playing a doctor and his wife was playing a lawyer, where they were... Exactly. That's exactly where I was going with that. It, it's, you know, that stereotype, you know, went away. And so, you know, for people like me, who are middle, who grew up middle class with, you know, uh, you know, both parents and everything. I mean, mm. there's lots of times um, Hollywood has gets this almost racist kind of picture of what black families were that, you know, most black families don't have a dad, it's a single mom, they're struggling or whatever. And it's really not right. not always the case. It's really um, um, the demographic is more money driven or income driven than it was um, than it was uh, uh, color driven after yeah. over time. I mean, in the beginning, like in the 60, 50s, 60s and 70s, it was like that. But, you know, that's one of the reasons why people related to Cosby so well is because there he was he, apl- he appealed to, to probably the widest possible audience, blacks, whites, rich, poor, you know, people, you know, he basically related to everybody. Everybody, he was America's dad, about, like I said, everybody, he was the TV dad for everybody, I don't care what color you were, yeah. Exactly, you know, that was that was his appeal, you know, is because everybody, everybody could relate regardless of, um, you know, where you come from, you know, there's yeah. a lot of, a lot of levels there. So after that, he went on to co-produce a spinoff of Cosby, A Different World, and I remember that was with Denise's daughter there. She was in that. Uh, the Cosby Mysteries. Uh, then he came back with a show, Cosby, and again he brought Felicia Richard, who was on the Cosby show. She was also on that, just Cosby. He also did Kids Say the the Dumbest Things, but I mean, what are some other roles besides Cosby you remember him for? Well, interestingly enough, um, uh, his movie career was never as, ex- as successful as his uh, as his uh, uh, television career. Oh, by far, and, yeah. Uh, um, but but he but Bill Cosby was smart. He was a smart, very smart businessman. That's what people don't realize about Cosby. When it came to media and, and understanding his own brand, because if you remember, what what kept him in the public eye through the latter part of the seventies, and probably what led to uh, him getting back on uh, on top of the Cosby shows in between, he was doing a lot of commercials. 
The guy would sell just about anything. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Jello <laughs> pudding, you know, Coke. I mean, Coke, the number one product in the world. They had him on, sure. Yeah, you know, Coke, uh, Jello pudding. Um, I think there was a few others that he did, but, but that's what he's re- remembered for, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, so staying, he understood as he stayed in the public eye, you know, the you know the tables would turn. The bigger roles would know. come back around, sure. Yeah, and they did. I mean, despite some of the, the bombs that he did, like Ghost Dad, Leonard Part Six. Right. Uh, actually, if you, I don't know if you remember the movie Jack with Robin Williams. I mean, yeah, um, I remember, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a really good movie. It's a, Robin Williams plays a uh, a ten year old boy with a an act, and it, it's an actual real disease. He, actually, he was in that, yeah. Uh, yeah, four times. And Cosby was in that. Cosby just did a fantastic job. I think it was like his was his teacher or mentor or something. It was. So you got two geniuses part. there, Robin Williams and Bill Cosby. How do you go wrong there, right? Yeah, yeah, you know. Two genius awards, but um, he had three Emmys awards, 11 Grammy awards, and 22 comedy albums. And I guess uh, Bill Cosby himself, I guess that was of our generation, we remember him for that. I remember yep. somewhat uh, my brother Russell, but what, what are some of the comedy albums that you remember him for? Well, there was uh, Bill's Best Friend, which, which was the very first uh, Cosby album that I ever listened to. Um, that was actually on an A-track uh, with my best friend, uh, Jay. We both grew up together in, in the number. And, uh, that was actually the very first time I heard Cosby do stand-up. I mean, I knew who Bill Cosby was because of Fat Albert at that point. I was probably maybe uh, seven or eight years old. Um, it, um, you know, and we were listening, we were in the, um, in the, uh, his dad's car going somewhere, to, we were going to Maine or something, and we're playing it, and we were just howling, you know, um, just howling, and we, we every time I went over, so oh, pull, pull out the, you know, pull out Cosby, and we, that was actually the, the even the very first comedy album I ever heard, actually. And then a friend of my sister's gave me his uh, one of his greatest hits, which had um, uh, it had uh, the Noah Noah on it. And mm-hmm. then interestingly enough, here, here's an interesting story. Not too many people know or, or remember is that one of the albums Cosby did. Uh, my cousin had it. And it was called for adults only, and it was probably if 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 I can say really? it this way, it was prob. Was that really? Was, was he dirty on it, or was it still clean material? Yeah. Really? Oh, he cuffed he cuffed like a sailor on that one. I don't remember yeah, that. But, wow. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Nobody remembers that album because I don't think <laughs> it's it a whole that. different side but, of Cosby, right? Yeah. You know, Cosby was just you know you know you know I I think I only listened to, to it maybe once or twice, and it's kind of like ah, it doesn't really. Right. You know, it's just Cosby cussing up, you know, cussing up a storm, which, um, you know, uh, things, uh, it, yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing. I mean, it's, as every, as we all do, it's human to put our celebrities on a pedestal. Um, you forget they're human you, sometimes, you do. You forget they're human, yeah. I mean, no, people um, uh, don't, uh, don't remember that Cosby had a pretty bad temper. Right. <laughs> he, he didn't, he didn't let it go too often, but... Because you didn't see that on TV, guy. but they don't realize you're a real person off of TV, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, he figured you're this lovable dad, and, you know, when, you know, uh, and, and I, th- I think he probably, as he got older, mellowed like we all do, but I remember he had a pretty bad... Bad temper, uh, yeah. Yeah, Well, he actually lived in Connecticut, okay? Now, I don't know if it's a true story or not, but a guy I worked with, he did electricity, and he worked mm-hmm. with another electrician who said, could be a rumor, I'm not putting it in, that he went to his house to check his meter, his electrical meter, and Cosby came out and said, who are you? He's like, I'm here to check the meter. He's like, you want to check my meter? You send a black man back to do it. I was like, whoa. But, you know, whether it's true or not, you know, you can have your bad, I've had my bad days. I'm sure Cosby yeah. had his bad days, too, you know. Don't, don't mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah All right, so we. Because you never know what goes on with people sometimes, I mean. Right. Everybody you know? has the bad days and good days, but, uh. I mean, America's Dad, a, a storied comedy career that we just went over. So many television shows, uh, movies, comedy albums, Emmys, Grammys. Then came 2010, where uh, over 60 women came out, and he had sexual accusations. I mean, uh, 60 women accused him of uh, drugs and rape, sexual assault, sexual battery, child abuse, sexual misconduct. Uh, there were allegations that he denied, and uh, the statute of limitations had expired on nearly all the cases, but uh, right. there, were, there were a couple that were still active, and after a year-long trial of one of them, he was found guilty on three counts of aggravated indecent assault and sentenced to three to ten years in 2018. So what did you think of America's Dad when all that happened? Well, 
that's there's a lot of a lot of layers to peel back there. Um, let let's go back to let's go back to the '60s for just a moment. One of his albums it was the album called um, Oh shoot, it's um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, I had it, I lost it. Anyway, one of his albums, Cosby we'll say. Actually, did an entire comedy bit. Um, it was actually based on a true story between him and Bob Culp during the I Spy days. And this is the thing where he literally laid it out how you, how he would, you know, it was a common thing to put something in a woman's drink and make her all... You know, right, even Cheech and Chong, like, they would joke about, what was it, uh, Spanish Fly, you know, that was the big goal, Spanish get some fly, Spanish yeah. Fly that and get a little... Bit, it right? was a common thing in comedy back then, you're right. Yeah, and, um, well, also remember it was the 60s, people were doing drugs that... that yeah, I know, everybody was shocked that people were doing drugs and having sex in the 60s, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, and it, was, it was the culture back then, or at least, at least a part of the culture back then. Right. So, I think what happened was was that, um, uh, and I'll say, it, I'll say it this way, I think Cosby uh, got into doing it, and then um, nobody called him on stop. Now, let me, let, me, let me just qualify everything I'm about to say with, I don't condone, condone any kind of thing like that, and whoever does it, Cosby or otherwise, should be, should be called out on it in sure. terms, and, you know. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that's the thing. I mean, I, I, I get that Cosby was, uh, you know, at the height of his career, was one of the most powerful people in Hollywood. I get that. The problem is that why didn't people close to him, meaning Camille, his wife, call him out on that? They knew he was doing it. He wasn't shy about it. Right. And, and a lot of girls like, said they, they wouldn't accuse him because it was Cosby. Who's going to believe him, you know? I mean, you're that big of a star. Who's going to believe you over a star like that, right? Right. That's true. That's true, and I think that was sort of the um, the veil that they they were kind of hiding behind it. But I mean, I, I'm, it's kind of like when, when it gets to be like you know the 1990s and the 2000s, and Cosby's still doing that. It's kind of like you know if I were Camille, I'd say you know don't you think you should stop? You know that's that's not really cool anymore. You know I mean uh, that, there's a lot more that went on that the general public will never know, and that's kind of what I think people especially in this whole day and age of the Me Too movement and all this stuff that, you know, there's two sides to every story. And again, I don't, I don't condone um, or approve of anything like that, you know. Right. But, but I, perfect example, I'm, I'm a dad. I'm a dad myself. I, I have a wonderful 23-year-old daughter, and I've been obnoxiously overprotective of her for her entire life. Um, even right now, I'm wondering what she's doing because she's in Florida. <laughs> you know, okay. She's fine, I'm sure, but you know, I'm thinking about her all the time. So my deal is this: one of the first accusations, if you remember, was um, this woman comes out and says, "Hey, you know, Cosby did that to me." You know, it, it was 1974 at the Playboy Mansion, and I was 15 years old. Okay, so being an overprotective dad, what's my first reaction? My first reaction is, "What the heck is a 15 year old doing at the Playboy Mansion in 1974?" Because back then there were no filters, okay. Yeah, you're at the Playboy that, Mansion. That's not an excuse either. to do anything to her either, just because she shouldn't be there. I mean, say again. I say that's not an excuse to do something to her just because she shouldn't be there. She's in a bad situation. I mean, I understand what you're saying. Without but... a, right, without a question. But the, the, but that's my point. I mean, being being a father, that would be my first question. What what, what parent in their right mind yes. would allow that? Well, because you know, if it wasn't Cosby, it could have been somebody else. It's not a matter of if. That's not saying that what Cosby did was right. That that's a question of why did you leave your your child unprotected in a potentially dangerous place? Right. That's what that's about. You know, because if it wasn't Cosby, it could have been somebody else. Right. Well, I don't give him the right to do it either. I mean, you know, it's like it's like a, a girl wearing a halter top and saying she's act, asking to get raped just because we're wearing a halter top. Don't mean she's asking to get raped. You know. No, no, not at all, not at all. And nor should she. And right. you know, just you know, I mean, she could be half naked. That there's no excuse to be raped. Right. But again. You're, you're looking at it, it's it's kind of like um, I, I mean if you're an alcoholic you don't go to a bar to hang out with friends you just don't because the temptations can you know you're putting yourself in a, in a bad, bad situation, situation. Right, yeah. okay so the thing is is that I mean being 15 at the Playboy Mansion you may not know that's a bad situation but someone in your life does right, right okay right. so I'm not again I'm not not condoning any of that she could have been there she could have she could have even lied about her age. Right. Saying, oh yeah, I'm 22 years old. I'm fine, you know. And, well, who knows? Still, she might have parents that didn't care about her. That's why that, she was there, you know. Say again. 
I say she could have had parents that didn't care about her, and that's why she was there to begin with, like a street, you know, street that's girl true. or something. So yeah, who knows, you know, but... it's it's unfortunate if that's the case, but right. but then it, it's a whole different conversation. Bad situations, bad things happen, right? Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of like you know, I, hmm. I don't know, I I being being a father, you know, and being a very protective father, I, I even I mean I didn't even have cable for most of my daughter's young life. Right. Okay, if we if we if it wasn't on DVD, we didn't have it now, you know. So it, I was very protective, not just monitor her what she watched that way, right? emotionally, you know, right. and um, not everybody gets that, you know, and it's unfortunate um, because things like, I mean, uh, I, I don't, uh, if you watch Dr. Phil, there's all sorts of whack jobs on Dr. Phil and you just, you just sit there and scratch your head saying, why would you let that happen? Or why, you know, you, it just it, to, to you and me, it's common sense. But right. some, people, some people, it's not, if it's right. a behavior that they're familiar with and it was never called out on. You know, they're not yeah. going to, you know, it's like the frog in, in the pot of water. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. All right, so let's go to a few of the fans wrote in, and the fans, they really were back and forth. Some people were able to separate the man from the work, and some people weren't able to separate the man from the work. And I'll say it's an opinion. That's what makes America great. You know what? Yeah. Everybody don't have to have the same opinion. If you're able to separate the man and his work, good. If you're not, good. That's what makes, you know... Your opinion don't have to be mine, don't have to be yours, but yeah. I'm going to read off some of the fans' comments and just give me your opinion on their comments, okay? Okay, sure. You All right, it. Lisa Higdon writes in, regardless, his video himself is one of the funniest specials ever, which I think it was voted the top five funniest specials. Oh, yeah. Bill Cosby himself. So she was able to separate the man from the work there. Uh, uh -huh. Tracy Richard writes in, uh, the other day I'm at the dentist and I see smoke coming out of my mouth. So you remember the dentist routine? That was probably his most popular <laughs> routine he was remembered for, right? Right, right, right. I mean, everybody was reciting that one. Uh, oh, yeah. Jay Clockings writes in, Accomplishments mean nothing if you commit rape. Anything you've done before and after that is garbage. Give him the death penalty and anyone else who drugs and rapes people. So, um, That's a bit harsh, I think. I think that what makes us such a great free society is due process. And where, whereas Cosby will never have the credibility that he once had because of what he did, um, it does negate the people that he, the, the help that he gave the people. Um, it means he's human and that he's done some things wrong, but he's done some things right. If, if anybody can be out there and say they've done something, done everything right, I'd like to meet them because it means they're Jesus. And yeah, right. Even Jesus said that the person you know among I mean? you who's never once sinned throw the first stone. Right? We're all yeah, sinners. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So but... I mean. Again, I'm not again not condoning what Cosby did. No, you know, no, no. Wrong. We got and rules he, in life. He broke them. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know. So I mean, All right. um, I understand. I understand the passion, and I understand the outrage. Right, right, right. Way. I mean, these are some brutal crimes. He's. I mean, somebody drugged and raped me, man. I'd be. I mean, that's you know, it's easy when it's somebody else. Imagine if it was you. You, you'd have a whole different take on the whole situation, but. uh... Frank yep. Santarelli wrote in, who, uh, he's from the TV show The Sopranos, he's one of the main comics in Boston, he wrote down, brutal, awful, I'm twisted around by this, a hero of mine, genius, funny, clean, 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 cleanest, nobody cleaner, albums filled with clean, brilliantly funny stuff, and lots yep. of it, horrifyingly horrible, ruined. So, I mean, do you, do you think he threw it away? I mean, just such a genius career, and he made choices um, to throw it away? No, nobody nobody at that level ever chooses to throw their career away. It's it's a behavior that um, he... See, the human mind is a weird, bizarre, crazy thing, because we can, we can justify just about anything. Um, it's why we have women who are stuck in abusive race relationships for years. They... they justify what you're doing and because that's how your that's how your mind and your heart protect themselves it's not healthy it's not right it's just the way our, our minds and hearts work mm -hmm. um so uh no coffee didn't choose to, to throw it away um but he did I, I, again there, there, there's a there's a serious disconnect between um him not thinking that that was i don't, I don't even think Cosby thought that um anybody would really get upset about it it was a different uh, time back then. I mean, nowadays, you know, I mean, not that it would be condoned yeah. at any time, but I mean. Right, yeah. I mean, it, it's because if you go there and you're with Cosby, he makes, just in his mind, he may have justified years ago 
that, all right, well, this could happen. And, you know, and it's me and they know it's me. So it's, you know, it's okay. Right. And, it's, and that's, I, it, it's twisted, I, I grant it. But, Very you know, twisted in the head, right. Yeah. You start thinking it, you're it, on different rules when you become a big star like that. You know, you start thinking differently. Well, well, being a big star for so long, I mean, look at the Jesse Smollett uh, situation. Um, he was trying to advance his career and made some bad decisions. You know, uh, can he recover from that? Absolutely, because first of all, I never even heard of Jesse Smollett before all this happened. <laughs> okay. I still ain't heard of the guy. So I don't know. His career, but um, you know, but but you know, it, 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 but he's he's owed due process. He's an American, right. uh, gay or otherwise, doesn't matter. He he's he's uh, he's afforded as an American due process. And it's so until he proven guilty. Mistake, yeah, exactly. That's what it has to be. And in this day and age, we're losing that. I mean, it's. I think uh, it's one of the reasons why it was so bad that it was caused. I'll tell you something. Nothing against Andrew Dice Clay, but if it had been Andrew Dice Clay, do you think we get this kind of? You, you wouldn't know, have been a surprise, yeah. But I mean, yeah, Andrew right, Dice Clay you know, wasn't America's dad. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, yeah, it brings us know, up to our next uh, person that writes in. Uh, Sam Bernstein yeah, yeah. writes in. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is filled with fucked up people. Which that's a good point. Which you know we're yeah. we're still honoring people in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which you know did some. Uh, what, Jerry Lee Lewis, I think he was uh, dating a 15-year-old cousin or something at some time. And, married her, yeah. Yeah, and he still honor his music, and I mean... 13. Yeah, 13 so 13 was it? Yeah, so I mean, how messed up is that? I mean, the world's filled with fucked up people, so... Uh, well, Katrina <laughs> Brown, <laughs> right? From, if he's like Bill Schlemmer from Winchton or Winchitucky, then, you know. <laughs> Winchitucky, they Sorry, go all kinds of... Love you, Bill. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Shout out to Bill, right? <laughs> Uh, Katrina Brown writes in, uh, built a magical career and then shit all over it, can't separate uh, and hear him from what he did. So she's not able to separate, you know, she, whenever, whenever she listens to his comedy now, she can't get to the last. All she thinks about is, you know, what yeah. he was convicted of. Yep. So I totally understand that. So, I mean, um, you, you personally, I mean, everybody's got their opinion. Are, are, you, ever, are you able to separate the man from the work? Um, I think because it's Cosby, and I, you know... He was such a hero I, of yours, yeah. Yeah, I, I can still laugh at some... I mean, I've heard most of it, so it's not like it's unfamiliar to me. Right. Um, but let me let me, let me me kind of throw this in, because I, I, meant, uh, and I was trying to take a good time to, uh, to say this. So, as I said, Cosby's temper was legendary. The other thing that was legendary about Cosby was his philandering. Now, why commit... He stayed with the man for so long. I don't have any idea. Right. Um, I don't know if it was a financial situation. They had five kids together. I, I don't know. Well, and, she and, said that these women knew that they were doing the drugs. Um, it was her take on the thing? It's possible, right. but but the reality isn't so much. It has nothing to do with the women. The fact that Bill, and that's the thing. That's one of the things she should be called on. Well, here's now here's what I heard about this, and I heard this myself on a news thing, was that he was going up to these women and saying, here, take these, and there were some pills in his hand, and she says, what are those? He says, they're happy pills, and then she takes them. Now, I'm not saying that gives him the right to rape her, but, I mean, if yeah. somebody's handing you happy pills and you take them, don't you got to take some responsibility for at least putting Absolutely. yourself into a bad situation? Absolutely. I, I would, I mean, Absolutely. And like, like you said, I mean, another one of my opinions was, you know, back in the 70s, you know, people were shocked. They would, you know, yeah, he was trying to drug women and rape them. Well, ain't that what's going on every Saturday night in bars around America where guys are going to bars yeah. trying to get women drunk and, and, and take advantage of them? So wouldn't you have to arrest every guy in America on a Saturday night at a bar? A lot of them you would, yeah. I yeah, mean, if the women press charges. But here's, here's the difference. A, a lot of them, I mean, if the pills voluntarily, then yeah, they, they need to take a responsibility. I think part of the problem is Bill kind of, in that sense, if there's such a thing, took it to the next level where he just automatically, and I, 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 this is what I've heard, I, um, through a lot of things, is that the, the, the drink was all a spike and they didn't know it. Right, he did it maliciously, right? It wasn't it wasn't a choice of the girls where if they're at a bar and they're I, drinking, they're making a choice where if he's slipping exactly. something into the drink, you're taking the choice yeah. away, right? She's not, she's not right, doing right, this, you know, right. herself, but... Uh, what I was what I was getting to before was that it was a point where Bill realized that his slandering was hurting his, his marriage. So he literally and by his own admission made a concerted effort to stop. He started wearing a t shirt that said Camille's husband on it. 
and there are pictures of him wearing that shirt. Really? Early 70s, so he had the funky. So maybe she did give him trouble behind the scenes, and we just don't know. Say that again? I say maybe Camille did give him trouble behind the scenes, and we just never heard about it. It's possible. Right. Your phone's breaking up a little bit there, Bruce. You in a good spot? Um, yeah, I actually haven't really moved from... Oh, now I can hear you better. Okay. Let me try it here. Uh, is that a little better? Yeah, that's a little better. Then we got you back. Uh, well, one of the things in America, I know, if you go out, if a guy goes out and he drinks too much, he's responsible for his actions. If he sexually assaults a woman because he made, he got drunk, okay? Now, if a woman goes out and she gets drunk and you do something to her, the guy's still responsible. So, I mean, at what point does a woman got to tell you, if she gets drunk, why isn't she responsible for what happens to her? You know, so if you're a guy, if you get drunk, you're responsible for your actions. And if a girl gets drunk, you're still responsible for her actions. At what point does the girl take responsibility, you know, for her own actions? Well, that's 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 the that's the problem, isn't it? Because we're we're especially now where we were leaning towards that in the early 2000s, because the whole concept of political correctness kind of hit its first peak in the 90s, and then there were women that were that, that had weaponized that whole concept. And so there are steps taken to kind of dial it back, and now we're on the, that opposite swing. But now it comes from an accusation. Yeah, right. And back then, you didn't have social media. You're guilty from so, accusations, right? Yeah, Even you President know, Trump said it's a dangerous time for men because men are being found guilty just on accusations, and yeah. life's are being ruined without any proof. I forget the guy who was what they're trying to get into his what Senate cabinet or something, and then the girl came out yeah. from years ago and accused him, and just accusations were bringing the guy down. Yeah, are you talking about Kavanaugh? Yeah. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, and I'm glad that Kavanaugh was vindicated because, and even Kavanaugh himself had said that um, that the uh, 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 something happened to that woman, Dr. Bird, or right, whatever, right, right. whatever her name was. Um, she was convinced it was him. But even the people she brought along said, nah, no, no. But in the eyes of the him. people, people had him convinced. They thought he was guilty just because yep. of the accusations. I mean, his life, even even his life's still ruined. He's forever going to be marked with it, even though he was found, you know, yeah. not guilty of it. be hanging there, you know, and that's unfortunate. But that's, unfortunately, it's a bad cultural precedent that's been set. Right. You know, and, and not only that, uh, not, to, not to bury Jesse Small again, but he was kind of trying to use that to his advantage. Right. And, and that failed. So it's kind of like, you know, I mean, I, I, granted, if, if that's why I believe in due process. It's like, look, if you're accused somebody, you damn sure, sure better have some evidence, you know. Um, well, there's a know, good a, point. A I, I want to bring up this enough. point. is uh, Now, you have your opinion from what you've heard on it. I have my opinion from what I've heard on it. But neither one of us were in that courtroom Okay, now I don't know if it was a judge or a jury trial, okay, but this trial went on for over a year, and they heard every single bit of evidence, which we did not, we can have our opinion, we have, we don't know all the evidence. Right. They heard everything, and I remember the New England Patriots player, the Aaron Hernandez trial, one of the jurors said it was the hardest thing they ever had to do, was to sentence a man to spend the rest of his life in prison, and she said, I had to be damn sure of what I was doing yep. before I could do that sentence, you know. These people heard the evidence on Cosby, and I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision to send another human being to jail for the rest of their lives, but I mean, they heard all yep. of it, that was the decision they made, and, you know, you have to respect that, because we can have our opinion, but we didn't hear all the evidence. They did for over a year, exactly. and that was the decision yep. they came to. Oh yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. There's always... Like I said, there's always two sides to every story. There's always a lot of things that, unless you're actively involved in it, that you don't hear. So, right, so we don't know the whole story, but the people who do yeah. know the whole story, they found him guilty. So that kind of speaks yeah. pretty loud right there. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. totally agree. So, all right, so yeah. uh, comes to our end. I usually end off every show in trivia, so uh, we'll do some trivia. Uh, okay. How are you on your Bill Cosby trivia? Okay. All right, according to... Uh, According to Cosby, after the dentist puts this thing in your mouth that will suck up your face, he leaves the room to do what? Oh, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> Going way back. Yeah, tell me about it. I, I, I knew this bit, too, and I haven't heard it in a long time. Uh, he goes back to... Um, According to Cosby, after the dentist puts this thing in your mouth that will suck up your face, he leaves the room to do what? Wash his hands. To laugh at you. <laughs> oh, laugh. <laughs> That's why he leaves okay. the room. Laugh. All right. Right, 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 right. 
<laughs> nobody's ever gone three for three on trivia. So you're all for one. Here's number two. Uh, oh. Someone once explained childbirth to Cosby by telling him to grab his bottom lip and pull it up over his head. Who is that lady who told him that? That was his wife, Camille, wasn't it? No, Carol Burnett, another comedian, told him to do that. I was oh, sure about that. I was, you know, I heard that bit. I always thought it was his wife who told him to do that. Now you know, Carol Burnett, another famous comedian. Yeah, All right, oh, yeah, um, right. what did the kids want for breakfast when Cosby's wife sent them downstairs to cook? Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. He got that one on. All right, uh, Bill Cosby, a uh, story comedian, actor, Emmy Award winner, Grammy Award winner, top five comics of all time, America's dads, accused by over 60 women of sexual assault, tried, convicted, and will likely spend the rest of his life and die in prison. Uh, Bruce, I want to thank you for being on the podcast. Thanks, Dennis. It was fun. And uh, yeah, what are your parting words about Bill Cosby? Well, despite uh, everything else, I urge people to don't be so quick to judge. Um, be very leery of social media when they say that somebody did something. Uh, for, with Cosby, it led to his conviction, led to people, you know, outlining uh, a serious problem. Uh, if you look at it with Jesse Smollett, hundreds of people believed him, and in essence, um, he endangered the lives of, of, of the careers of, of two men um, using his star status. So. Uh, the best thing I can tell everybody is what my father told me, because I've rest his soul, do your research. Research it. Don't just accept what the media is telling you about things. You know, there's ways now that it's easier now more than ever to dig deep into a subject and to find, really get down to the nitty gritty of, of things. And I urge people that if you're going to tweet about something, if you're going to Facebook or whatever, Instagram about stuff, make damn sure you're, you know, you're, you get the facts uh, behind you. Otherwise, you know, it could come back to bite you. A lot of gossip out there. You don't want to spread gossip. You want to spread facts. Oh, yeah. All right, Bruce, I wish you luck in your comedy career. We'll be talking to you soon, okay? Take care, Dennis. Good to talk to you. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Comedian Bruce Chester talking about Bill Cosby. Um, Man, 60 women. That's a lot of women, you know. One or two may collaborate online, man. You got 60 women. You got to put some truth behind that. Like I said, you have your opinion, I have mine. We didn't sit through a year-long trial. Tried and convicted. Bill Cosby, America's dead, comedy genius. He will die in prison. Uh, if that's rightfully so, that's up to you to listen and to decide. And we will see you next time on Funny Like a Clown Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Worth. Thank you for tuning in. Good night.